And joining me now is NBC News national security analyst Clint Watts. So, Clint, what do you make of this strategy by Ukraine? Is it better to go on the offensive into Russia than continue to play defense in other vulnerable areas in Ukraine? I think the Ukrainians have reached a point where they're losing ground in Donetsk. They, they're losing maybe a kilometer a day at times, and they can't hold that line. So a strategy that can be pursued it is more dangerous in some ways, but can be more successful is a mobile defense, essentially attacking uh, and doing offensive operations in a limited scope somewhere else other than right there on the front line, trying to divert Russian resources. I think that's the ultimate goal. And then politically, just to send a message back to Moscow uh, that things are not going well on the battlefield for Vladimir Putin. Now, Ukraine hasn't commented on these military activities, but does the success in Kursk embolden Ukraine to try and make other incursions into different border regions, or do you think they'll keep it uh, connected just to this one area? They're likely to just focus in this one area because across the board, Ukraine is suffering from one problem more than all others, and that's a lack of manpower. They can't really afford to lose a lot of troops on the battlefield. So in an economy of force kind of strategy where you're doing a mobile defense, they'll attack into Russia, they'll probably withdraw at some point to try and conserve their forces and get the Russians really to pull troops off the front line and into their own turf, into their home country to protect it. So it's a delaying action in a way, and I'm sure they're trying to develop a longer run strategy that really inflicts maximum cost against the Russians while conserving enough of their force. And how will Russia respond to this? Obviously, they'll attempt to try and push these Ukrainian troops back, but what other options do they have right now? Yeah, it's very embarrassing for the Russians to have the Ukrainians who were really losing ground inside Ukraine suddenly thrust across the border and really start to hit an undefended area, causing some casualties. That means they have to redeploy. The Russian military has to redeploy some of their troops from the front lines uh, back to secure their own rear area. At the same point, it's just damaging image for them in terms of their own morale. What they want to instill is that they can't even defend their home turf. That starts to bring some questions back to Vladimir Putin, more similar to what we saw the first year of the conflict when they met major setbacks at different times. Yeah, and maybe expand upon that now. We're two and a half years into this war. Does this incursion give us any idea of the strength of the Russian military at this stage? One thing we know is that the Russians have been able to mobilize troops consistently in a mass scale for more than two years now. It's quite a feat based on just the number of casualties that they've taken in the hundreds of thousands over the last couple of years. They still are able to put an army out and continue to grind out through what is really just in a, a war of attrition at this point, artillery, tanks, uh, working across the ground on defensive lines. That is impressive in the sense that they are able to take those casualties. At the same point, the question is, when will they ever stop? At what point would they reach a pause? Everyone's wanting to know, are they just waiting for the U.S. election to see if support for Ukraine ends? Or are they going to make an actual breakthrough and keep pursuing to try and make another shot at Kiev like they did in the opening days of the war? Okay, Clint Watts, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.